In this video, I'm going to show you how to prove trigonometric identities. Remember that to verify an identity, you're going to substitute a value for x on both sides of the equation to make sure the left side is equal to the right side. However, this is not sufficient to conclude that the equation is an identity. To show that it is an identity, we need to show that both sides are equal for any value of x, so therefore we're only going to use x or theta. Now a couple of rules. You cannot perform operations across the equal sign when proving a potential identity, such as you can't move a number or an expression from one side of the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign. And another thing is you can't multiply both sides by an expression either. So you want to simplify the expressions on each side of the identity independently. So to prove the identity, you're going to substitute the trig identities that we already know uh, to make them equal. Make sure that you start with the most complicated and then try to use sine and cosine if, you, uh, if possible, because sometimes using sine and cosine is easier. Have confidence and practice. Practice, practice a lot and you will get better at them. All right, so let's take a look at our first example. So I want you to verify um, that 1 minus cos squared theta is equal to sine theta cos theta times tan theta. Now, I can choose any value. I didn't tell you what number to choose. So let's use pi over 4 because the pi over 4 special triangle is quite nice and easy to use. So that's going to be root 2, 1, and 1. So we're going to substitute pi over 4 into the expression wherever you see theta. And these are all multiplied together. Now the squared, cos squared, means that we're going to actually square whatever we get for cos pi over 4. So in this case, cos pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. And then we're going to square it after. So the notation with the squared in between is just the way that we write uh, trig value squared. Sine pi over 4 is also 1 over root 2. So times 1 over root 2 and then times 1. So 1 over root 2 squared is going to be a half. And then on the right side, 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is also equal to half times 1. 1 minus a half is a half. So the left side and the right side both equal half. That's great. Let's determine the non-permissible values. Now when we take a look, the only expression or the only term that has something that could cause non-permissible values is tan theta. And that is because tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta. That might make it easier for you to find the non-permissibles. So we know that cos theta can't equal 0. So theta can't equal pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. So we can also say that theta can't equal pi over 2 plus n pi where n is an integer. All right, now let's prove that same identity. So this time, I know that the 1 can be replaced by sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, because that's the identity, because it equals 1. I still have the minus cos squared theta, so I'm going to write that on the left. And that's going to equal sine theta times cos theta, but let's change our tan theta using our quotient identity to be sine theta divided by cos theta. So on the left, these conveniently cancel off to give us sine squared theta. On the right side, the cos thetas cancel off, <coughs> excuse me, and we have sine theta times sine theta, which is also sine squared theta. So that's great. All right, let's take a look at some harder ones. <coughs> Now, I recommend that when you draw and prove these identities to draw a t-chart. So what I like to do is put left-hand side and right-hand side. And then we're going to recopy the expression that we are trying to prove into my table. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, so I see some brackets here, so let's get rid of them. I'm going to distribute. So I get sine theta times 1 plus sine theta times cosecant theta. Cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta with the reciprocal identity. 
And that's great because the sine theta or sine theta cancels off. So we're left with sine theta plus one on the left. And on the right side, I can also change that around to be sine theta plus one. Now, sometimes you might have seen that people write equals or even QED. QED means it's a Latin word for code or an abbreviation for code, arat demonstrandum. Okay, what does that mean? That just means that which was to be demonstrated. And so what we want to demonstrate in this case was that the left side was equal to the right side and we demonstrated that, so QED. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So I want to draw my chart. Now, definitely for this one, the left-hand side looks a lot more complicated than the right side. So I'm going to work on the right, sorry, the left-hand side first. Now, one thing that I do notice is in the numerator, I have a sine theta and the other part is also sine theta. In the denominator, I notice that there's also two cos thetas on the bottom. So, just from practice, I, if I factor out a sine theta, I'm going to have 1 plus sine theta left in the bracket. In the denominator, I'm going to factor out a cos theta. And I also will have 1 plus sine theta. So this is great because now I can cancel these binomials off. I'm going to rewrite what I have left over. So that's important. It's not that we, it's obvious that this is going to be 10, which it is, but we need to rewrite what we already have left. Okay, so it's important to show every step. So sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta, which equals tan theta, Q, E, D. All right, let's take a look at another one. So here we have cos theta um, divided by one plus sine. So again, let's draw my chart. All right, so now we're going to show, um, so it kind of looks like the left side might be a little bit harder. So I'm going to multiply uh, by the conjugate, because I can notice on the right side there isn't any fractions. So multiplying the conjugate means I'm going to multiply by the opposite sign of what's in the middle here. So it's 1 plus, so I'm going to multiply by 1 minus sine theta. So in the numerator, I get cos theta times 1 minus sine theta all divided by, and when I distribute this, I get 1 minus sine squared theta. So remember that 1, as I said before, was an identity that was sine squared theta plus cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. So the sine squared theta can cancel off. So now I have cos theta and 1 minus sine theta in the numerator. In the denominator, I have a cos squared theta. And this one of the coses can cancel off. So now I have 1 minus sine theta divided by cos theta. Now looking to see what I want to try to get to, I want to try to get to secant theta minus tan. And I can see that if I divide the 1 by the cos theta and separate this into two fractions, minus sine theta over cos theta, I will actually get that. So my one over cos theta is secant theta. Sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. All right, it's great. So now the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So again, Q, E, D. All right, let's show you one more. So every all the questions that I've done so far, um, I've only used one side of the equation. It happened to be the left side. It doesn't always have to be the left side. So I'm going to show you one more here. Um, we're going to take a look at question F. Um, now in this one, it seems kind of complicated. Both sides seem complicated. So what we're going to do, let's draw our table again. Um, 
and let's write down what it is that we're trying to prove. All right, now whenever ever you see sine two theta, the first thing I want you to do is change that to its identity, which is the double angle identity for sine, which is two times sine theta times cos theta. It's always a lot easier. It's divided by two sine theta in the denominator. So you can see the twos cancel off and so does the sine theta. So you're gonna be left with cos theta. Now, I obviously, not obviously, but I don't want to really try to get cos theta to equal 1 minus sine squared over cos. So in this case, I'm also going to work on the left-hand side. So remember that 1 is equal to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cos theta. So the sine squared thetas cancel off, and then I'm going to be left with cos squared theta over cos theta. So I can simplify this to only get one cos theta, which equals the other cos theta on the right-hand side. So Q, E, D. So I've shown you several examples. So try some of the other ones and see maybe if you can use some of the techniques that I've shown you.